Hey guys. So Q3 is almost over and it is almost time for Q4. And this is the perfect time for a fresh start. So I don't know about you, but I have always been somebody who loves a new start, a fresh start, a new school year, moving to a new town, getting a new opportunity, starting a new job. And of course, new years where you have that time to reflect and to dream about how you want your future to be and who you want to be in the world and what goals you want to accomplish. And I have always loved that energy, that fresh start energy. And so once I learned about 90 day planning, I realized, oh my gosh, I could get this fresh start every single quarter. And so even though it's going from September to October right now, I get that new year fresh start energy because I create that in my life and I love it. So if you're with me, definitely leave a like on this video and a comment down below to let me know that you love that fresh start energy. And the energy is great. The momentum is great. But where I used to fall short is the follow through. I'd get about a week or two into my reset and then I would feel like overwhelmed all over again, which is where my HB90 method of planning 90 days, but being really realistic about my time has been super, super helpful. But in the past on this channel, I have shared almost every quarter a review of my previous goals <laughs> or a reset of my Kanban board with my HB90 method. So if you're interested in seeing that, I'll put a playlist for all of that below. But what I've never shared is a more holistic look at all the things I do to reset my life and my space and my family and everything for a brand new season or for a brand new quarter. So I'm pretty excited to share this with you. So I'll be sharing more than just my Kanban and goals. I'm gonna share all of it. So let's get started. So I really like to think of my like reset in three stages. So there's the review, realign, and reset. So I'm excited to bring you along this journey and this process with me, and I'm ready to get started. So my review process begins with a series of questions in the back of my HP 90 planner, where I'm prompted to take a clear look at what I really and truly accomplished this quarter. What are the things that were my wins? What's really working for me right now? And then also to reflect on what's not working. Where am I getting distracted? Where is my mindset not in the right place what stage of life am i in and am i really showing up in the world the way that i want to and the way i intend to this reflection is such a big step in my process so that i can look back at how things went and use that data to figure out where i want to go and what needs to change and this part of the process always also includes a deeper look at my kanban board and my goals from the quarter so in q3 i actually hit all of my goals, which was awesome, but I still fell short on my writing projects. And so far I have not published a full length novel this year. And so that plays a big part in my reflection. And as I start thinking of what I want to do in the quarter ahead, it's like, what am I most disappointed that I haven't done yet, especially since this is the last quarter of the year. So I'm just, you know, in my review, trying to figure out what has gone wrong, what's gone right, and what can I do to make sure the next part of the quarter or the next quarter really goes well. We also have a family huddle <laughs> where George and I discuss how things are going in our family and we'll discuss our budget, our joy. We'll actually review the spaces in our house. So we'll go through the fridge. We'll go over our meal plans. We will think about our life goals, any to-do list things. Oh, this needs to get done. We need to call a plumber. We need to get a doctor. We'll just write all that stuff down so we know that we're on the same page. And this is so valuable. When my review is completed, I like to go outside, spend some time aligning myself with the way I want to feel, putting my feet in the grass, thinking about all of my blessings, all the things that I'm grateful for, really taking it in and giving me that extra space to, you know, I've reflected. Now it's time to realign myself with the future that I want to have. And I will spend time 
you know, thinking, reflecting about the general direction of my life. And then I like to do some meditation. And my favorite meditation to do is a future me meditation that I got from a book called Playing Big by Tara Moore, where she guides you through this session of visiting a future version of yourself and listening to what he or she has to say. And it is always so powerful. And I take a lot of notes on how that has gone. (laughs) And then I will spend some time getting back into my grand vision for my life and aligning myself with that. So I spend some time on Pinterest, really thinking about who do I want to be finding pictures that show me visually how I want to show up in the world, the kind of things that I want to change about my life so that I can go into Canva. So you can just download pictures from Pinterest for personal use. Obviously you couldn't use them for professional, but for personal use, you can go into Canva and create, I like to do a planner dashboard and I will make a wallpaper for my phone so that my vision for the quarter and who I want to be and how I want to show up in the world is right there front and center in my planner on my phone. And it just always reminds me of how I want to show up and the person that I'm trying to become. When I know that I've really gotten my mindset in the right place, I like to start the reset process. So sometimes that can begin with a little bit of self-care, like getting my nails done or, you know, getting out to a coffee shop and starting my plan. I'm also somebody who over time tends to get really cluttered and disorganized when I'm busy. And so I have taken some time to clean up my spaces as well as really start to work on my plan. And that goes not only for my offices, but for my closet, my fridge, and a bunch of places in my house. A quick clean and organize of my spaces is always in order and Sometimes they can get cleaner than others. So this particular space is where I do a lot of my live streams. So I haven't found a particular solution for really other than just leaving all of my equipment up when I have meetings coming up, but I do try to put them away if I don't have something going on, but I usually have things going on. So I'm just getting used to my office kind of always having lights and things, but I have cleaned up as much of just a minute, baby the desk and as possible. And I'm going to finish up with my plan and then we will do the full reset of the Kanban board, which I'm looking forward to. One of my favorite parts. So the actual HB90 planning is the ultimate reset. So I reset a lot of things in my house and with my mindset, but it's really my plan that gets reset entirely. And this means my schedule. It means taking a look at the upcoming quarter and marking off any events that I have, any commitments, any holidays or vacations or times that I want to take off so that I can take a realistic look at my schedule instead of just saying, oh, I've got three full months and just throwing a bunch of stuff on my schedule. I am looking at how much time do I really have? What commitments do I have coming up that are going to limit the time I have to work on other things? And then when I take that realistic view, I can set goals that feel achievable for the quarter. I can set a schedule that feels like it's going to support the goals that I'm trying to attain and the person that I want to be in the world. And then I come up with task blocks. Basically my schedule is arranged according to 30 minute task blocks, sort of like the Pomodoro method. And then I determine how many task blocks I have for the entire quarter. And then I will set my goals. And then I will set which projects I'm going to work on and make sure that those projects fit into the time I have available. And then I'll break those projects down into tasks. And that is basically my entire HB90 system. After much work, my goals are set for the quarter and I am changing things up as I do from time to time. So goal number one is to ignite my community and my own personal passion by engaging and delivering high vibe content. And I have some outcomes according to different channels. So I want to publish uh, the disappearance of Vanessa Shaw and sell at least 3000 books. 
I want to grow my coven to, so my coven currently has 4,000 members, but it's at about 2,500 a month active. And I want to change it to 3,000 or more active members per month. My newsletter also, I have 14,000 on the list, but I want to have 95 active users, 9,500. Instagram, I want to get 8,600 or more followers. YouTube, 8,900 or more subscribers because I'm ready to start growing and putting my time and energy toward that goal. Then for my second goal, um, and this goal will be purple. So I have, if you can see over there, I have some purple, ooh, put purple post-it notes, pink, and then blue so or green. So I'm going to be changing up the color scheme just a little bit here. Goal number two, same as last quarter to create quality heartfelt content for heart breathings in order to grow my impact and income. But the numbers always shift. So Instagram has been bumped up to at least 11,750 YouTube to 56.5 or more subscribers. My Etsy income and my course income have, uh, you know, want to bump those up as well, because I want to maintain growth and my current momentum momentum. And then my final goal is where I'm kind of playing around with something different. So it says to step into the next level version of myself. This is much more of a personal goal. Whereas these are like business goals. This is all per personal <laughs> to step into the next level version of myself by attaining at least a thousand 1500 or 2000 sweetie points. I need to write sweetie points this quarter. And then I have a points list and this might change a little bit. I need to put some more time into it, but things like, uh, this is kind of like rewarding myself with a point every time I follow through on a habit. So if I get up with my alarm without snoozing, I get a point. If I read or play or watch TV, like play games, do something fun that isn't work. I also get a point and that reading has to be stuff. That's not reading for work. If I lose a pound, which I'm trying to lose 25 pounds this quarter, I get five points. If I write a thousand words so I can get, so this plays into this goal as well, but this is just my own personal habits as well. Then I get 10 points. And then I wrote one task block other, because I know there's going to be some things that I do that I'm not remembering. So like if I spend a task block prepping my food or doing something like that, then I can count it. But I need to get more specific about what these other things are. And I just didn't want to make those decisions right now. And my reasoning is I love myself and I am worthy of feeling good. So the way I'm planning to use these points goes back to kind of an old system that my husband created back when I was first starting to learn to write books and I was struggling to write at all. And so he helped me develop this system called Sweetie Points, where basically for every thousand words that I wrote, I got a thousand Sweetie Points and then a thousand Sweetie Points basically equaled a dollar or something along those lines, like $10. Um, and so I would buy things and have them in kind of like a bookshelf. And that would be my sweetie store. And as I accrued points, I could spend them in the store. And this was very, very motivational for me as a reward system. So part of what I'm going to try to do is both a reward, it's kind of like carrot and a stick kind of situation here. And I'm going to see how this works. I've never done this before, which is my rule for goal number three is that I cannot buy any non-essential things. So clothing, stickers, stuff for my office, washi tape, any of those kinds of fun, non-essential purchases I cannot make unless I have the sweetie points to buy them. So instead of buying things ahead of time, then I cannot actually purchase something unless I have the points. I'm hoping that will be a heavy motivator for me. And I, what I need to do now is I need to figure out a system for actually tracking it somewhere that I can see it like up on my wall or something like that so that I can keep track of my points. I could also do it in my daily planner. So if you guys want to see an update on the point system and how I'm going to track it. I can share that with you maybe next month once I've kind of gotten into the groove of it. I'm pretty excited for these goals. So the next part of my planning is basically to, I have these project brainstorm sheets in my planner. So basically this involves 
writing out the project. So what I would do is I'd go to goal number one and I would say, okay, I, I know I want to write this book. I want to increase my social media. I want to get more YouTube subscribers. So what are the actions that I'm going to take in order to make those things happen? Then once those projects are all set, I will take those sticky notes that I have up here and I will break those projects down into tiny little tasks. been quite the afternoon, quite the scheduling and everything else. And of course, when I'm actually following through with this, I don't necessarily follow it to a T because I don't know that that's humanly possible to say, well, I said exactly 20 task blocks on this task and I'm going to do it like a robot. Like that's not the way it works. This is really just more of a planning tool rather than I'm expecting myself to follow through to perfection. It's just a way to ensure that I'm not putting more on my plate than I can physically fit into the amount of time. And then I just do the best I can to follow through on a day-to-day -day basis in the best way that I know how. And I'm not going to follow the schedule exactly right. I'm not going to balance my time blocks exactly right, but at least planning in this way accounts for all of those things so that I can get close enough. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these projects that I have decided to do and feel really good about my plan. And I'm going to start breaking them down into those tiny little post-it notes. For now, I got to go pick up some errands from Walmart, pick up my son from school, maybe grab a Starbucks as a little bit of a treat. And then tonight I will finish the Kanban board. So I'm feeling really good about the plan. Um, if you have any questions about how this task blocking work, like I know I'm going through it super fast. This is something like a process that we do over the course of a week in my HB90 bootcamp. And of course that course is over for Q4, but if you want to help plan Q1, it will open again in December, or there are some planners that you can go grab. The digital planner that I've been hoping for a long time is actually almost ready and should be up on Etsy before the quarter begins. So that is coming as well. And I'll probably do a quick walkthrough of that for you guys. But oh, that's a lot of really good planning today. And I'm exhausted, but I'm feeling really good and really positive. And there's just something so empowering about creating a plan that feels realistic and that I know I'm setting myself up for success. It really feels good. So, all right, onward. Okay, sorry for the lighting in here. These stacked windows with this morning sun do not make for great recording depending on the time of day. But I spent some time last night just creating all of my sticky notes for my tasks and watching some YouTube. And it was great. So I have all of my writing tasks here. Basically, my goal is to ignite my own passion and creativity as well as my community. So it's a social media goal and a writing goal for me. And so I have all my tasks here. These long ones, I decided to go really granular with the disappearance of Vanessa Shaw and just put a thousand words. Now, sometimes I will do every 5,000 words, like get the book to 5,000, 10, 15, 20, and so on. So I don't have as many sticky notes, but I think in order to really motivate myself this time, it's best to just do a thousand words for every single sticky note. And I'm estimating it's going to be about 80,000. So we'll see. Now I already have 20,000 written, but I'm still in the process of editing that and uh, in to get it to where I want it to be. So I've got my Friday coffee chats, some Project Phoenix stuff, which is a newsletter and book update thing. I ran out of purple. So I have my socials on a weekly basis. So sometimes people ask, do you put recurring tasks and things like that on your schedule? And sometimes I do if I'm trying to remember 
to build a habit. So instead of listing like every social media post I want to make, I'll just put socials week one, week two, week three, and it'll stay here on my to do section until it's done. And I ran out of sticky notes for purple. And I cannot get these off of here with these nails. Um, so I need to cut and make two more for weeks one and two. I have a bunch of stuff for my spectacular celebration. And then here, I also do have some book updates and social plan stuff that I want to do that I'm not sure of what all those tasks entail. So I just put add stickies. So I'm going to create more stickies and add as I go. And I figure that project out. I also have some book 12 work that I'm going to do. I'm going to be working on audio books this quarter, and I'm going to be working on all the publishing, hopefully of the disappearance of Vanessa Shaw. And of course, whether or not I'm going to edit and publish this book is really going to depend on the muse. So if I get to those tasks, great. If I don't, then they'll get pushed back to the next quarter. I have all my editing tasks here as well. And those I arrange just by 10,000 words each because my editing tends to go pretty quickly. So hopefully that is going to be a really good goal. And I'm hoping you're going to see all that purple down there at the end and that I'm going to have a book published this quarter. So we will see. Then for my second goal is my heart breathing school to continue to create quality heartfelt content and deliver to my community. So I've got all of the NaNoWriMo diaries. So this is day one, day two, all the way to day 30. I have all my Preptober videos and the Preptober workbook here, NaNoWriMo diaries intro, the intro video, um, plan your 2023 writing year, playlists for the NaNoWriMo Diaries, thumbnail templates, all of those kind of things. I'm also doing monthly masterclasses for my Publish and Thrive students. And then I'm going to be creating all of my HB90 planners, the HB90 course, my December videos, and um, some other things that I'm doing for the reboot or re-record of Publish and Thrive for next year. Then I mentioned this on my Instagram stories that I'm going to be doing a long-term planning mini course in December as well. So those are those tasks. And then over here, my third goal, which is more of my personal goal, this is all weight loss. So I put one for every pound and we'll see how that goes for me. I'm going to be also doing a lot of organizing. I've got a manifesting course that I'm going to be teaching to do with my um, sort of witchier friends. Any of you are welcome to join that as well. <laughs> um, it'll be a course about just a mini course about how to plan and manifest your best year ever next year. And then more like vlogs and some other things that are going to be about organizing. This is by far my lightest goal. <laughs> and then this, these two are pretty equally heavy. Although I will say in terms of my time for this quarter, I have allotted way more time for this than in the past quarters, because I'm determined to have a book out this year. So these are my Kanban boards. If you aren't familiar with the system, I will link down below, but this is to do for the entire quarter currently in process or doing. And then once it's done, I move it to the bottom. So it's all set up. These are the tasks that I'm going to be focusing on. And of course, my assistant has her own set of tasks that are related to these projects too. And I'm so, so grateful for Renee. So that's the basic plan. And then the next part of the reset process is really a reset of my mindset of my like just mental health and self-care. And so part of that was I met for over two hours with my business mentor, Amber, to really like reset my mindset, get in the right place. And now our family is going on vacation. And I know that it's not always feasible or financially possible to go on a vacation every single quarter. We're only going away for two nights, but we're going to go celebrate my little Evie's birthday that was earlier this month and just completely unplug. And that's something I like to do at the end of every quarter after working really, really hard. Sometimes you just need a reset. So I'm taking that time for myself. So I'm going to go pack. Okay, you guys. So that is my 90 day reset routine. And it's more than just thinking about my goals. It's really about making sure that my life is on the path that I want it to be. And I know that there are things that are out of our control sometimes, but there really is more in our control sometimes than we realize or even that we allow ourselves to admit. <laughs> and so part of this whole 90 day reset routine for me has become taking responsibility for some of the things in my life that maybe previously I wasn't 
able to take responsibility for and really setting myself up for success and stacking the odds in my favor as best I can and understanding that there will always be things outside my control, but that in this sphere of control that I do have, I'm going to try to maximize and make the most of it. And sometimes that means taking leap forward and, you know, following through. And sometimes it just means I'm going to work on my mindset and my mental health and I'm going to get some rest this quarter. So whichever way it is for you, however you want to reset, I am here to cheer you on, but I hope that you enjoyed seeing mine and I hope that you are ready for a beautiful Q4 ahead. Before we go, I did want to mention that I know some of you have been a part of this event before, but my business mentor, Amber McHugh, is just runs this amazing free event every year called the Planathon. And the Planathon is happening a little bit early this year. It's happening in early October. And I am one of the guest speakers this year at the Planathon. And I would love to have my Hardy's community there with me, supporting me, cheering me on. Plus, you're going to get so much out of this entire week long planning event. So I have put a link to invite you to this free event down below, and I hope to see you there. Other than that, you guys, I will have our October notebook challenge coming up, and then we are diving into Preptober and getting ready for NaNoWriMo. And I am trying to make sure to uh, make all of those videos relevant to you, whether you're doing NaNoWriMo or you're just writing or just preparing for a project. So hopefully you will enjoy all of those. My Preptober workbook will be out this time next week, and I'm just looking forward to a beautiful Q4 with all of you. So if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any content from me. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.